Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller recruiting in yoga pants. So this week we're going to talk about recruiter incentives. There was, <laughs> there was an interesting discussion over on actually Twitter of all places, because of course, about there, there was a gentleman who seemed quite convinced that recruiters are somehow incentivized to lowball candidates. This is interesting to me. I have personally never received any kind of kickback or bonus or anything else for lowballing a candidate. Perhaps I've been missing out. What I do know for sure is that there are absolutely horror stories out there. We have seen these. We know that they are true. I think so, I think there's a combination of kind of urban legends, but also some situations that are absolutely horrifyingly accurate. And sometimes recruiters tell on themselves. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, okay? So yeah, it's questionable, but here we are. Um, anyway, I wanna clear this up. I think that first and foremost, it's important to understand how offers and how comp ranges and how those kinds of things high level are created, discussed, decided upon, all those kinds of things. I have lots of videos on compensation already. So let's, you know, all about money playlist is definitely one I would encourage you to take a look at. So I'll link to that up above. Uh, but let's, let's get down to it. What, what is, if a recruiter is lowballing, why? Let's just, let's just rip the bandaid off and get to it y'all. Okay. This is what happens when companies lowball candidates. Okay? There are there are some prizes for this kind of behavior. Okay? First of all, we have an increased likelihood of an offer being turned down. It's just the facts. Like if you're going to be silly with people's comp and you're going to intentionally come in below market, you're probably going to get a lot of people saying no to you. Hey, supply and demand plays a part here. I understand how the game is played. I get it. I don't have to agree with it, but I understand it. And the number one thing you are setting yourself up for is just a flat out offer decline. People are going to say no to you. So that is prize number one. If you lowball people, you're likely to get declined. The second thing that can happen is you are going to lose people. So let's say that someone says, well, you know what? I've been out of work for six months and I desperately need to get a paycheck and I'm going to go ahead and accept your shitty offer, even though it's terrible and you're terrible people for making it, but I'm out at the first opportunity. So your second prize is significant risk of attrition. So this is assuming you don't take prize one and you don't get the offer decline, somebody actually accepts, you're gonna lose that person in a matter of probably months, honestly. They're not gonna stay. What do you think happens after that? I will tell you what happens after that. Ah, it's depressing. your recruiter has to backfill that position. Now, for the most part, so let me let me tell you a little bit about how roles are assigned in corporate. And this also kind of there's a, there's a there's a caveat with agency as well. But let's talk about corporate for a moment. So I'm going to do double the work. I'm going to do two times the work cuz now I have to replace the person who left. Okay? It's not always as easy as just going back to our existing Canada pool and picking someone because people are moving fast, right? If we've already rejected you or we didn't respond to you fast enough or whatever, it's 
it's not gonna go well. I'm starting over almost every time I'm starting over. Yes, I'm going to search my database. Yes, I'm gonna start with, you know, potentially warm leads, of course, but I am basically starting a new search again, okay? The reason why this is annoying as your recruiter is because the way that roles are assigned, so typically in most internal or internal recruiting teams, we are resourced to a certain number of hires, okay? So we will look at a company or we'll look at a business group or, or whoever we're partnering with, for example, and we'll say, okay, Mr. VP, you need to grow your team by 100 this year. And so we are actually going to hire, you know, two recruiters, or we're going to have three recruiters aligned to to this business or whatever. And we're going to set this up with this expectation that you have X number of headcount to fill, you have Y number of anticipated attrition because there, there's natural attrition that happens even in the best of companies, right? People get promoted, people transfer, people move on, people do whatever. So we already know we're going to have some backfill. So we have our net new, we have our backfills, and then we have our, you know, potentially, um, you know, kind of extra overhead or nice to haves, or if we find the perfect person, those kinds of things. So these can be broken down, you know, those numbers are going to vary. And, and there may be other things I'm not counting here. But there is going to be kind of a staffing plan, right going into the new fiscal year or production cycle or whatever, depending on how your business is structured. If we're lowballing people, we're adding to those hiring plans. We're making filling our actual headcount a lot harder because of the risk of declines. We're increasing our attrition because people are going to bounce when they're underpaid. And we may not even get to the specialized, you know, nice to have, I'd really love to get this unicorn because we're so busy chasing these two, right? So that is like, I, I mean, I, I can't make it make sense. I'm sorry, I can't. I, I know people love to think that we're out here lowballing. Like, I, why would I do that to myself? Why would I personally, as the recruiter who suffers the consequences, do this to myself? I don't understand it. If y'all can make it make, like, draw me a picture and show me why it makes sense, maybe there's a discussion to be had. I don't get it. Okay, so... These are my prizes for playing the lowball game. Now, the part about agency, there's two reasons. First of all, agency recruiters uh, receive typically receive commission and it is a percentage of your compensation. So the more money you make, the more money I make. So that alone, like the math doesn't check out for me to lowball you if I'm an agency recruiter, just saying. But also, a lot of places have a free replacement guarantee. That's right. A lot of companies I worked for as an agency recruiter, if somebody left within a certain amount of time, I had to refill that role for free. I got no extra money. Now, sometimes there's a sliding scale. If it's been, you know, 60 days, maybe we fill it for half of the fee or we do whatever. There's it's but look, let me just say this, okay? Whether I'm filling it for a new fee or not, if I'm constantly backfilling a role with a client, that client is going to think I'm an idiot and they're gonna blame me and they're not gonna work with me anymore. Just saying, even if it's their own damn fault for down for, for like lowballing, they're gonna blame me, I'm probably gonna lose the client. So from a recruiter point of view, let's make this very clear. From a recruiter point of view, I have never in 23 years agency, corporate, big, small, all the experiences I've ever had in recruiting, I have never, ever, 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 ever personally received any kind of incentive, attaboy, anything for lowballing. Conversely, I have been forced in other companies, particularly a very small company I worked for many years ago, I've been forced to make lower offers, and this was my life. I left that company pretty quickly because of these shenanigans, okay? So do I believe companies will attempt to lowball? Yes, I do. 
Do I believe that the biggest enemy a job seeker has when it comes to this kind of stuff? It's a recruiter that has no guts. Almost said something else there. <laughs> If this recruiter does not have a backbone, if this recruiter is not willing to push back on a client or a hire manager and say, this is what the market says, this is what our comp ranges are, this is what is an appropriate compensation package for this person at this level in this role, that, my friends, is the real enemy. Okay? Hiring managers don't know what they don't know. Comp is, off, you know, often dealing with, you know, just spreadsheets of data and, and it's less about the person in front of them and more about the aggregate of all the people we're hiring and all of the compensation inputs. And I understand that. But recruiters who do not have backbone and who are allowing companies to run roughshod and hiring managers to make decisions that actually ultimately hurt themselves and their teams, that, my friends, is where we need to start having hard conversations. And I'm ready to have those. So if you are a recruiter, I'm going to make you a promise right now, my friends. If you are a recruiter who is unsure how to push back on some of that bad behavior or some of those challenging conversations with hiring leaders who think it's a good idea, then, oh, let's just start lower and see. No, I want you to get in touch with me. Let's let's talk. I'll give you a free coaching session on how to better navigate that hiring manager conversation and that offer pushback conversation. I've got some talking points I can share with you. And if you are a job seeker who is concerned about getting lowballed or concerned about, you know, do I have a spineless recruiter and, and who's on my side, who's my advocate, please check out the FAQs, salary FAQs available for you on the website, recruitinginyogapants.com all about money playlist. You can check that out or let's talk money, whatever I called it. I don't remember, but check out the playlist about compensation, all things money related, get some talking points, get some ammunition so that you can go negotiate your best offer. But keep in mind above anything else, there is not a single incentive to be found y'all. The only reason a recruiter would make a lowball offer is because they're chicken. That's it. That's the, that's the video. <laughs> That's it. All right, y'all. I hope that helps. Let me know down below if you have any other questions. If you want to get a coaching session, if you need more help navigating salary conversations, I got your back. Recruiting in yoga Go grab your templates and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.